Hi everyone, it's Amanda from Quarantine again. I've gotten a few requests recently to do another video specifically on ramen. Um, I love ramen and I loved top ramen when I was younger, but now I like it a little bit more in a sophisticated way. So I make it from scratch, which sounds kind of scary, um, but honestly, it's not really that bad. It does take some time just because there's a bunch of steps and you could separate them out, like, you know, making your hard boiled eggs at another time, or I'm kind of jump starting the process by buying broth from Stater Brothers that's already pre-made, um, but I'm going to add in a little bit extra to give it that really good ramen taste that we're all used to. So this recipe is going to take 30 minutes um, for actual prep work for the noodles and you need an hour rest time. So if you're going to make this for dinner, start it like after you finish lunch. So I'm going to start with 408 grams of flour. Dough especially likes to be measured out in grams because of moisture content um, and other issues. So you want to make sure that you use a food scale to actually measure your ingredients when you are making a dough. Then I'm gonna add in about half of a teaspoon of salt. These are just my dry ingredients. And half of a teaspoon of baking soda. Then I will just go ahead and connect my stand mixer. you over there. We are going to connect our dough hook. Push that in there. Turn. Lift up the stand mixer. Let it go on low. And we just want to get those ingredients mixed up basically. They're going to be mixed up pretty quickly. So I am preparing now about a quarter of a cup of warm water. You have to be very careful when it comes to dough. You got to get your temperatures right and everything. So for warm, you're looking more around uh, room temperature. So I'm going to add that in with my liquid measuring cup. And then I have one egg that I have beaten. And I'm going to slowly add that into my stand mixer going to let it mix at the lowest speed until everything is moistened um, and then I'm going to click it up to probably like a two or a four to really get this puppy going. So I'm going to let this run for a few minutes and in the meantime, oh I can't turn my video around, I'm going to make my hard boiled eggs, or sorry soft boiled eggs for my ramen eggs. So I'll be back. And we're back. So I wound up having to add about two and a half tablespoons more of water than initially anticipated. And that's just the fun of working with dough. Um, you might have to add a little bit more flour or a little bit more water depending on your environment. So you see our dough is uh, pretty shiny now. It's not sticking to me. That's how I know it's ready. I'm going to put that on a lightly floured surface and in the meantime while the dough was kneading, which all in all took let's see five hours once it became a round ball and maybe only two minutes to become a ball and get all of the um, flour and everything saturated with the liquid ingredients, um, I took some time to make my marinade for the ramen eggs. So it's about a quarter cup maybe maybe a little bit more of dark soy sauce i use two tablespoons of rice wine vinegar two tablespoons of mirin and two tablespoons of sesame oil and that is like the best taste i think in the world i just love sesame oil i don't think you can overdo it with ramen eggs that's just me so once my eggs finished cooking in the water I prepared an ice bath for them that's going to stop them from cooking any further and also going to help me with getting the shells off. These are older eggs, so hopefully it'll be even easier to get the shells off of these. So that'll be nice. 
Um, so we're going to give those a few minutes to cool down. And I am going to take you over here to our dough. It's on our lightly floured surface. I'm just gonna roll it around here and I'm gonna turn it a quarter turn, push down and then turn it again and just keep kind of turning it a little bit. I'm just gonna make sure it's all nice and nice and kneaded. Really is from the, the, the KitchenAid, but I like to, to make sure it's ready to go. So shake out that extra. So I have my ball here of my dough that has been kneaded and put on a floured surface to make sure that it is good to go. I'm going to set this in the fridge now for an hour until it is ready for the KitchenAid again. And we're gonna do the same thing that we do with spaghetti. So get out your spaghetti rollers and your spaghetti cutter attachments. If not, you can do it by hand, but as my cousin Jackie experienced, it's not so great when you do it by hand because you really can't get it as thin as you'd really want a ramen noodle to be. So that being said, I'm gonna wait for these eggs. I'm gonna wait for this dough and I'll be back. And we're back. I have my dough that has been sitting in the fridge for an hour now. I've cut it into three equal-ish size chunks. I'm just gonna roll it in a little bit of flour because I am about to push this through the pasta roller. Now, my cousin Jackie and I have tried to do this by hand and at least in our case, it did not go very well. The gluten in this dough is just crazy and it makes it much harder like to roll at all. Like you probably can't get it any thinner than this. And believe me, you want it thinner than that. Thick ramen noodles don't taste as great as you'd think they do. You would think, oh, any kind of noodle is great, but it just doesn't give you that desired taste. So I'm making these kind of into a semi-rectangular shapes. I'm gonna push off some of that extra flour. All right, I have my pasta roller here. Um, it is set on a one right now. I'm gonna turn it on and I'm gonna roll it a few times until I get it thin enough at like probably a four. I need to plug it in. Nope, oh, we're plugged in. Let's try this again. There we go. I really want this rectangular shape. See, it's kind of folded over, just folded it in thirds, and I'm gonna run it through again. No, oh, no. See, you didn't quite catch that time. Let's try one more time, folding it over, folding it over, kind of push it down. it is going to stick. So you're going to need to have a lot of flour on hand for this process because in between all of the different rolling it's going to get thinner and thinner which means it may not have enough flour to get it to the desired um, easiness. I don't know. It's just 
it's just not going to end up right. So now I'm going to turn it off. I'm going to bump it up to level two and make sure got a little bit of flower coating on my dough so it doesn't get sticky. Turn it on again. Let's push it through. Now it's going to get wider and wider as it gets thinner, so just be prepared for that, and it's going to get longer. The, the recipe I used says that you should um, cut it into six pieces for the dough, but I honestly do not like that. Um, I thought that it made it too hard to make the squares. Now, the downside of that is that you're going to have much longer pasta sheets, which, I mean, this length really isn't that bad, so I wouldn't worry about it, but I think it's easier to work with this way. All right, bumping it up to a three. Let me make sure, grab some flour, just rub it across here. All right, let's turn it on. All right, run this bad boy through again. Oh, this is looking delicious. All right, gonna bump her up to a level four now. Make sure we're not sticky. No, we're good. It's like a heart shape at the bottom of this one. It's like I went a little wrong with that one, but it'll be okay. We have all of our pasta sheets rolled to a level four. I now have my spaghetti attachment on my KitchenAid. I'm gonna turn it up to a stir, and then I'm gonna cut my noodles. Isn't that beautiful? See what I'm talking about? If it's uneven, some of your noodles will not be the right length. But you can see for the most part, we got a good shape. So we're having pretty consistent noodles. Pretty. All right, I'm gonna put those in a pile there. I'm gonna grab my Next roll of dough. Look at that. Oh yeah. Now, I am going to show you what I've been doing with the broth and get these cooking. All right, one of the last parts beyond plating, I have this ramen broth from Stater Brothers. Now you may be asking if I make everything from scratch, why am I using this broth? Well, I use it as a starter. I also threw in four cloves of garlic that I minced and also about three tablespoons of fresh ginger um, that I technically zested. You want it to be tiny. I mean, absolutely tiny in the soup. You don't want chunks. You want the flavor of it. So I use this as a starter because most of you are not going to have access to kelp, which is normally what you use to get started for this broth. It is boiling now. So we are at the point where we can add in our noodles. I also did a nice healthy dusting of flour with them. Don't ask me why I'm using a wooden spoon. I didn't mean that. It was just the first thing I grabbed for. I'm only grabbing one of the piles for noodles. Alexa set timer, two minutes. Literally all Second you timer. need. Two minutes, starting now. It's two minutes to cook noodles. I just wanna make sure they're not sticking together. You can see it's pretty thick within the soup at this point. That's why we don't need any of the other noodles. So I'm going to let this cook and then I am just gonna plate it. Um, for me, uh, in this case, it means I'm just going to add some uh, two green onions and the ramen eggs that I'm gonna slice open. Boom.